if misuse can cause unreasonable fear or unjustified acceptance that the fight is over, leading to unnecessary suffering and death. Life pretty much froze after this day. There are new COVID-19 cases in North Texas. And it is spreading fast. Declaring a state disaster. Fort Worth Mayor Betsy Price is expected to announce a stay-at-home order. Dallas County will move to a safer-at-home order. Our world turned upside down, forcing us to change our ways, forcing us to be by ourselves and focus on our health because we had nowhere to be. What if I told you that in the city, the streets were empty? Would you believe me? What if I told you schools shut down and businesses closed too? Even stadiums weren't rocking like they used to. Would you believe me? We hear words like isolation, social distancing, the lockdown, to wash our hands since they can harm us. To keep six feet, we don't know who to trust. The fear turns into greed so we take more than we need. But we're all in this together. We're all connected, all equally affected. A new dawn will rise. Everything will go back to how it was. Continue on doing the things we love. In the meantime, we'll miss our families. Happy birthday, Lana. Oh, I missed you. We'll miss our friends. But we'll all be together again. We used to be on the phone when we're all together. Now we can't wait to get on the phone to be with each other. Will that change? Show support for our community, for the ones we love, and the ones who don't get appreciated enough. Yeah, someday it will all be back to normal. People will fill the streets again. Sports will return. The only question left is, how do we move forward? Will our world change or remain the same? What is the new normal? Hope you all can see my screen. Um, is it visible? Yeah, okay, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm Nadini Kalungal, joining you from Sri Lanka. And today, um, we are going to discuss why education cannot wait, even during the COVID-19 period. Moving on to the first slide. Do you know the impact of COVID-19 on education? It is estimated that 1.6 billion learners in more than 190 countries are affected. It, this is approximately 94% of the world's student population and 99% of these students are from low and lower middle income countries. And moving on to the economic loss of not getting education during this period of time, actually the World Bank, according to World Bank reports, it has estimated that the the loss of not the economic loss of not getting education during the COVID-19 period could be more than $16,000 for a student. But if you're from a more developed country, you might not seem this amount as a really big amount. But if you're from a least developed or a developing country, this amount of money is a serious amount of money for you. As an example, I'm from a middle income country, which is Sri Lanka. And a, pro, um, a US dollar is approximately 200 Sri Lankan rupees. So this counts as 3 lakhs and 20,000 Sri Lankan rupees. So if this situation continues, this amount could be doubled or tripled. Moving on to the third fact, which says 23.8 million students are at risk of dropout. This is basically due to the pandemic's economical impact and loss of learning during the entire time. So actually, 23.8 million students is a really big number of students. If we want to achieve SDG for quality education, in according to 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, we could have left at least a person behind. But if we left 23.8 million students behind, that means we are, we are not going to achieve SDG four in the 
in 2030. Moving on. Okay, the only possible solution right now is the distance learning. This may be until we go back to school or this might become the new normal. So I guess Jefin has, um, Jefin has already sent a link to you. So before we describe on this present the, in, about this slide, you guys can go ahead and do the icebreaker because the first one actually, um, I'll send the link again. So I can share my screen to, for us to see the results. So feel free to go and do the icebreaker firstly. So I'll share my screen. Okay, there's a lot of things coming up. Mm, so use this, use the second link, no, sorry, use the first link, um, which the admin has sent. Um, then you can go and um, answer this question. Plus, feel free to do so. Okay, there's someone who's saying it's boring. Yeah, it is boring actually. So there's a lot of things coming up. So if you haven't already done yet, just go ahead and do that. It's, it's totally an icebreaker, so feel free. Okay, there's someone who's saying it is sad. Um, okay, just go ahead and answer this question. Since we don't have much time left, we'll be moving on to the presentation again. So back to the presentation. So the only possible solution that we have right now is the distance learning. This is maybe until we go back to school or this might become the new normal. If this is until we go back to school, the kids who lost their education during, the period, during this period of time might take a lot of time to get on track again. But if this becomes the new normal, we have to find solutions to include everyone in the process of learning because we couldn't left anyone behind, as I said earlier. So moving on, this is totally up to you. What are the issues that you see in the process of distance learning? Feel free to unmute yourselves. Um, I think you couldn't actually unmute yourself, so feel free to use the chat. Um, so. These are the things that you see in your area. This might be the things that you see in your area. So feel free to share them with us. So tell us what are the issues that you see in the process of distance learning. Um, yeah, Rosemary has a great answer. Unstable internet connection. Yeah, it is a really big problem when it comes to online education. So anyone else have any ideas? Um, yeah. yeah, most of the times I also get distracted. That's pretty true, Debbie. Yeah, there's something. Okay, um, feel free to share your ideas in the chat. Yeah, technical difficulties, that's a really big problem. Like it's far worse than the connection problem sometimes, technical difficulties. Um, yeah. Oh, there's a lot of things coming up. Actually, Enuri has sent something and Sarah has sent something. 
Uh, actually, I do agree with you all about these things. I was also focusing on these things in the next few slides. So I really appreciate you. I really appreciate you this, you know, I really appreciate your texts. So moving on, since we don't have enough time, we'll move on to the next slide, but feel free to like share your ideas here in the chat. So yeah, Amrita has also sent something. You guys can read, you guys can interact on chat. Moving on to the next slide. Okay, these are the four main categories of that I noticed in the as the issues of the distance learning. So the first one is the digital divide and lack of digital literacy. Most of you guys have also mentioned that in the chat. And the second one is the rise of non-communicable diseases and mental health disorders. Moving on to the third one, it's some students are at risk of abuse, trafficking, domestic violence, child marriage, etc. The fourth one is the rise of inequality. So let's discuss about these things in depth in the next slides. Moving on to the digital divide and lack of digital literacy part. So what is digital divide? Digital divide is the gulf between those who have ready access to computers and internet and those who do not. As an example, you can see here in 21 European countries, grade four pupils of lower socioeconomic background are half likely to access internet comparatively to their advantage base. So I noticed three main categories which cause digital divide and lack of digital literacy. There might be some subcategories for these things as well. Moving on to the first category, it is the lack of resources. This is basically like the use of outdated resources and the and when you're from a low bandwidth in an area from a low bandwidth internet, this might be a really big issue for you. So as an example, would you believe me if I say in um, would you believe me if I say that in seven low income countries, less than 10% of the poorest households have access to electricity. Electricity is actually kind of like the most uh, most basic thing that you need for a distance learning. But when you don't even have electricity, you can imagine the situation of those children. Moving on to the second part, it is lack of trained professionals. So it is quite obvious that when your teacher is not really know how to use a computer, the students getting a proper education is not, is, is not something possible. So moving on to the statistics, it has it has, as a, from a recent research, it has found that 64% of primary and 50% of secondary teachers um, in sub-Saharan Africa have minimum training, which may not include digital skills. So moving on to the third fact, which says lack of awareness and ICT education. Um, and let's take an example. Let's say that our parents are not really aware about the importance of educating, importance of getting a good education during this period, and also they are not aware about the use of ICT. So they are more unlikely to give you give you the access for online education. It's basically because their lack of awareness and lack of ICT education. So that is something which pro, uh, which prevents children from getting a good online education during the COVID nineteen period. Moving on to the second part which is rise of non-communicable diseases and mental health disorders. So I basically categorize these diseases into two types, which is physical and mental. Moving on to the physical health problems, um, vision problems and injuries due to incorrect posture are the most prominent diseases that we see right now. So when, you, when you're looking at your computer screen over a long period of time, you get you get vulnerable for these vision problems. And also, if you're sitting in an incorrect posture, if you're using an incorrect posture, you are more vulnerable for diseases such like carpal tunnel syndrome, repetitive stress injury, headache, and those things. And moving on to malnutrition. You might be wondering how malnutrition is a serious issue when it comes to COVID-19 period. Actually, Nearly 310 million school children have relied on their school for a daily meal. This is 110 million in India, 48 million in Brazil, and 9 million in Nigeria and South Africa. Some schools have even provided take home free packed monthly rations to their students in developing and least developed nations. This is simply because their, their families are unable to afford the cost for their 
their basic needs actually. So you can imagine the situation of these kids when they don't actually have enough food. So moving on to the third one, which is obesity, diabetes, and cholesterol. On the other hand, in most of the developed countries, we see these problems. It is the rise of obesity, diabetes, and cholesterol, like such like diseases, which you get when you don't have enough physical activity. So you can see that in a part of the world, malnutrition is a prominent, is a prominent problem when it comes to the COVID-19 situation because people don't have enough food. But moving on to the other part of the world, since they have enough food, they're suffering from these diseases because they lack physical activity. So, but both of these things leads to a common problem when it comes to education during the COVID-19 period. Moving on to the mental health part. This, the most prominent diseases that we see these days are the social isolation, stress, stress and anxiety, and soon fatigue. Moving on to the first one, which is social isolation. As we all know, most of us, um, as we all know, most of us are isolated than ever. We don't get a chance like we do, usually do. Um, sorry. Uh, we don't get a chance that, like we usually do to go and meet our peers. That is why social isolation is a prominent disease right now. Moving on to the second disease, which is stress and anxiety. This could be pandemic related stress and anxiety, or this could be the normal stress and anxiety. However, this problem is a really big uh, mental health issue when it comes to the COVID-19 season. And moving on to the Zoom fatigue. Actually, I was not really aware about Zoom fatigue before the pandemic. But now I can see that there is a disease called Zoom fatigue, actually. This, this is the disease that you get when you watch a Zoom meeting or when you're in a in kind of virtual meeting over a long period of time. You feel like your eyes are blurring. You feel like your eyes are tearing or you feel headache. That is what we call Zoom fatigue. And that is a really big problem when it comes to this uh, pandemic situation. Before moving on to the third fact, I would like to um, give you a chance to go for a quick icebreaker because the session is getting pretty boring. Um, okay, I highly encourage you all to um, vote for this one and I'll share my screen to see the results. Um, could any of the admins kindly um, Kindly share the link. Uh, maybe I can. Um, okay, please um, go ahead and vote on this link. Since the session is getting pretty boring, we can do this icebreaker. Okay, there's a one word for pizza. Okay, my favorite is actually pizza right now. And fortunately, I couldn't vote. So please feel free to vote. Okay, now there's pasta. Okay, one word for burger. Okay, okay, now pizza and pasta are both the same. Just feel free to just, um, you know what? Okay, there's one more word for pasta. Okay, let's wait. Everyone just feel free to vote because this is an icebreaker. So it's totally, you know, for fun. So just go ahead and do that. Okay, there is there is two, there are two people who like sweets. Okay, that's that's a good choice. Most of the things that you see here are quite spicy things. So yeah, sweets are a better option for a dessert. Okay, we have 10 people who are, have already voted. So 
So feel free to do so. Okay, here's the final countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, past award. Anyway, we'll move back to the presentation. Okay, back to the presentation. So some students are at risk of abuse, trafficking, domestic violence, and child marriage, et cetera, during this period of time. Okay. School age children are unlikely to return to school when the schools are reopened. This is estimated that it's 3.5% of lower secondary school aged girls and 4.5% of upper secondary school aged girls in sub-Saharan Africa are more unlikely to return to their schools when the schools are reopened. This is basically because of child marriage, child labor, unwanted pregnancies, etc. Actually, according to World Bank reports, in some countries, every additional year of secondary school may reduce the likelihood of marrying before 18 by 5 percent points or more. So you can imagine the situation of these kids when they don't get a quality education online during the entire period of time. OK, moving on to the second fact which says the United Nations Secretary General has reported a horrifying global surge in domestic-based violence linked to COVID-19. You all might know that fact, actually. Um, as an example, in France, government authorities reported that in one week, domestic violence in increased by over 30% in areas under movement restriction. This might be teachers, or this might be students who are facing this kind of violence. It's super hard for them to focus on their education when they're repeatedly facing the, such kinds of violence. So that this is a serious issue that we have to focus our attention on when it comes to giving education for during the COVID-19 period. Moving on, there is an increase in online uh, there is an increase in online child sexual exploitation as well. Moving on to the statistics in 2019. 69 million online photos and videos of child sexual abuse were reported in US alone. This is basically prior the pandemic in 2019 and in US alone. You can imagine the situation, you can imagine the global situation right now because children are more vulnerable than ever when it comes to this, these types of child sexual exploitation because most of us use Computers, most of us use digital, devi digital devices and most of us are using them, using online platforms. That is how we become vulnerable for this, um, this kind of online child sexual exploitation. Moving on, do you know that COVID-19 has pushed 120 million to extreme poverty? This is the basic thing which leads to inequality. So, how does this lead to inequality in education? Imagine yourself in this 120 million. Your parents might not be able to afford the cost for your online education. So you might become the next victim of child marriage or you might become the next victim of child labor. It's simply because you don't have enough money to afford, your, afford the cost for your online education. And also this is while your peers are learning. You lose your while your peers are learning. So that is the problem. And moving on to the next part, this increases the gender inequality as well. Um, so just to give you an example, let's say that you're one, you have only one device at home and you're from a community where they believe a, a specific gender is superior than another. And you're born in that so-called inferior gender. If you have siblings and if you have some more pe people at home who use uh, digital devices to learn online, um, your parents are more unlikely to give you that device because they think that educating you is a wastage of time and money. So they will probably give that device for the kids who are from the so-called superior gender. And actually, when actually education is the key which gives the discriminated a voice. Education gives them a voice to raise against inequality they give a voice for them um, as I said earlier I'm sorry for repeating that anyway when you don't have education you will never get a chance to talk for your rights 
So that is how a gender inequality is a rising problem when it comes to on this online learning. Moving on to the other fact, which says when a group of people are pushed to extreme poverty, and when, the other group, when another group of people are staying in the normal conditions, that increases the economical capability gap as well. So that is how this leads to inequality. Moving on, this is up to you. What are the possible solutions that come to your mind? So since we discussed a lot about the issues, you might have some good solutions in your mind. So feel free to um, put them in the chat since you can't um, turn on your know, microphones. Feel free to put them in the chat. I would really love to hear what you, what you think of this. Hey everyone, I just I just want to quickly like encourage you all to put your ideas in the chat so we can we can like share them among us. Yes, there's a really good solution from Emily. Um, just, um, just go ask, ahead. Can I, oh, uh, shall we um, say our uh, solutions here or in the chat? No? Um, um, if, you fit, if you can say it using like now that way, it's totally fine. Just say it. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Um, I think if our education system can be more interactive, more colorful, like outside the books, using presentations, and uh, as human, we are uh, more apt to the videos, the presentation that we can see. So if it can be shown just the way you have beautifully explained everything through the presentation. So if our education system can be a bit like that, I think people, uh, our students would be much more encouraged and we could learn easily. Yeah, I just totally agree with you. There was someone who was saying the online sessions are boring. Actually, I do agree with that. That's a great point. So we have another great point from Enuri, Sri Lanka. Oh, she's from my country. Actually, distribute the solution says distributing digital device to underprivileged children to bridge the digital gap. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good idea. That was what I was also thinking. Thank you guys for answering that question. So if you have any more ideas to solve these issues, please feel free to put them in the chat. Okay, there's one from Sarah. She's from Iraq. In my opinion, making more awareness campaigns in the country. Yeah, we saw that the parents are not really aware about the use of ICT. So that is a great solution for that. Moving on to the Leah solutions, giving access to free Wi-Fi to all students. Yeah, because actually we saw that there are a lot of students who can who couldn't possibly go for online learning because they don't have a they don't have internet connection. So that is a good solution to solve that issue. So do you have any more solutions? If you can turn a uh, turn on your microphones and say that it's it would be great as well, or else you can put them in the chat. So we will be moving back to the presentation. So if you have any more ideas, please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, 
yeah, as Tasmin has already mentioned, you guys can put them in the chat. We'll, we'll read them out at the end of the presentation. So moving back to the presentation, um, I noticed, I noticed these three main uh, possible solutions actually. Moving on to the first one, it's resource and financial assistance and ICT education. Most of you were also talking about that in your, in the, in the previous one, in the previous um, slide. And actually moving on to this part, the first thing that I noticed is there should be a proper transparent funding mechanism. So why I mentioned a proper transparent funding mechanisms instead of saying a, tra uh, instead of saying a funding mechanism. The reason for that is that actually when it comes to a proper funding mechanism, government government gives us the reports about how they use their funds, what uh, what is the progress of using those funds and all. Because in what we see in most of the developed and developing and least developed countries is that the funds for the general public is more unlikely to reach the general public because there are corruptions inside the systems, there are corruptions inside the country, that is why the funds don't reach the general public. So if we can have proper transparent funding mechanisms where they provide the where they provide reports on how they use their funds, that would be super great. And also moving on to the part B, which says ICT as a subject, it is pretty obvious that when a student doesn't know how to use a computer, that student is more unlikely to go for online education because he or, he or she is not really aware about using the uh, using these digital devices. So that is why ICT as a subject is something crucial. The part C is that resource management. So what is what is the resource management? Resource management is the use of resources according to availability and other conditions. So as an example, let's say that you're from a, an area where there's low bandwidth. So you can go for multimodal teaching or you can go for e-learning tools with different modes of delivery. So what is multimodal teaching? Multimodal teaching includes TVs, radios, printed papers, and all instead of strictly using these platforms where you need a high bandwidth. And also e-learning tools with different modes of delivery. What is that? Let's say, let's take this session as an example. If you want to join this session and you have a connection failure or you have something like a technical difficulty right now, but you you want to join this session. So we will provide, if we are going to provide you a recorded video of this session, you can go and watch that. That is how the different modes of delivery work. If you can't, couldn't attend to the live session, there is a recorded video. That, so that I think you got the idea of what I said. Moving on to the second solution, which is initiating universal design for learning. So what is this universal design for learning? Universal design for learning is an approach to teaching and learning that gives all students an equal opportunity to succeed. So when it comes to universal design for learning, it is actually created for everyone, not only for the best student in the class. It is created for disabled children, refugee children, and also those marginalized children, and also everyone, that includes everyone, because that suits for every person's strengths and needs. So just I'll give you two examples on how this universal design for learning works. Let's say that we are learning about an image, but you're from a, an area where there's low bandwidth internet. So you couldn't possibly load that image. So there is a description of that image. And also if you can't actually read that, there is a spoken version of that description as well. That is how the universal design for learning works. So let's move to another example. Let's say that we are watching a video. That is what we have as the as our educational work. So if you are not really aware about the language, if you don't know the language in that video, you it it feels pretty impossible for you to you know learn from that. So there can, you can have some captions from regional languages in the universal design for learning. And also, if you are not a person who's familiar with these languages, if you're a person who learns from sign language, there is a, there is a specific video of that video from the sign language as well. So that is how the universal design for learning works. Moving on to the third fact, which says 
eliminating all barriers for students to achieve education. So what are these barriers? I have mentioned two examples in this, in this AB part. So the first one is prohibition of child marriage. When it comes to the statistics, you might not believe me if I say more than in more than six countries, child marriage is legal. You can imagine the fate of these students in this period of time. If the child marriage rates increases, that will obviously increase the maternal mortality rate and the infant mortality rate. What is maternal mortality rate? Maternal mortality rate is the number of, number of mothers who die when they're giving birth to babies. And the infant mortality rate is the number of kids who die at birth. Since the, this, um, since these people are under age 18, there is a big possibility of increasing these rates. And that will cause a serious problem when it comes to the global situation. Moving on to the part B, which says, eliminate all formal and legal barriers for students from marginalized communities to access national education system. Just um, let's take an example for that. Let's say that you're from a traveling community. So you travel from country XYZ to ABC during the COVID-19 period, and now you're staying in country ABC because there is a lockdown. Since you have not formally registered in the country ABC's um, education system, you couldn't possibly go and access that education, that education system. But you have to have education during this period as well. It's simply because you don't know how long the lockdown will exist. And that is why there should be an elimination of all formal and legal barriers for refugee kids, for kids from traveling communities, kids from marginalized communities, and even the kids who are disabled have to ask to, um, there must be a way for them to access the national education system without any legal or formal barriers. Okay, moving on to the final and the most important part of, to, of this presentation. It is your individual effort. Actually, your individual effort can make a difference. As Sig Sackler, a famous author in the United States of America once stated, you can have everything in life you want if you will just help enough other people to get what they want. You might be wondering how you can help others even when you're facing such technical difficulties and also when you're facing um, connection failures and all of these things. But we have to make sure, we have to be aware of the fact that we are privileged than thousands of kids around the world who couldn't possibly access online education. We are so privileged than them, even when we are having some issues. So the solutions that you as an individual could take might differ from region to region. The solutions for my region might not be the best solutions for your region. So you can brainstorm on that. As an example, I'll give you two ideas on how you can help others. You can donate something. It doesn't always have to be money. You can donate whatever you have. That might be clothes, that might be food, and even that might be your books. You can donate that. That might help someone else. And also, you can teach someone else. If he or she is unable to access online education, you can teach them what you learned today. Try to do that, that will make a change because if you want a change, you have to step forward and begin the change. So that is how that works. So we are moving on to the final part of the presentations. Uh, presentation. So thank you for listening to me during the entire period of time. Thank you for your cooperation because you were really interactive and I really appreciate that. So if you have any questions, feel free feel free to put them in the chat and also you can if you have any feedback you they are more than welcomed so thank you for listening to me during the entire time oh um while you guys are typing your questions um can you kindly turn on your cameras because we can take a photo Please feel free to turn on your cameras if you want.
I guess someone should start it because then everyone else will. Okay, Devin has started. Anyone else wanna turn on your cameras? Let, we can take a photo so we can keep it as a reminder. Okay, Amrita has started. Anyone else? Um, okay, any raise there. So just a reminder, if you have any questions, feel free to type them meanwhile. Um, feel free to turn on your camera so you can take a photo. Okay, there's Rosemary and anyone else? Okay, there's chance and meanwhile, don't forget to type your questions and also your feedback. In the meantime, sure. Oh, there we go. Somebody else has done the camera on. We should take a picture now while that gives some other people time to uh, chat. So there we go. There we go. So there you go. One, two, three. And then just one more, just in case, because, well, technology isn't always on our side. So one, two, three. There you go. Um, I'm also going to stop the recording now, just so there's not an endless amount of footage at the end. <laughs>